All right, everybody. So today on the show, we have Justin Pelletier from the Rochester Institute of Technology. He's going to go over a new program, a uh, new cybersecurity program for their cyber range. They're, and he's going to kind of go over that a little bit, talk about the role in the program itself. Uh, so Justin, take it away. Hi. Yeah, thanks for having me. So um, I'm, uh, I'm working with the cyber range at, at Rochester Institute of Technology to develop a new uh, boot camp program for um, for rapid career transition. So there's, there's been a lot of displaced persons, as we know, um, in the current, you know, economic environment, a lot of folks have lost their jobs. So, so, uh, the team got together and said, Hey, what can we do to help? And there's a lot of different things that, you know, different folks can do, but, but cybersecurity is a persistent need. Um, if anything, the demand has increased because of everybody working from home and not behind their corporate firewall. So, so we thought it would be nice if we could kind of combine the, the known deep pervasive need with, the sudden uptick in available persons to join the cybersecurity workforce. So that's kind of the, the idea behind the boot camp itself. But, um, you know, just to sort of simply describe it, it's, it's a 15 week immersive program uh, that focuses on really building those entry level skills for somebody that doesn't have a technology background already. Um, and there's a lot of folks like that, that, that have lost their jobs. They weren't in technology fields, um, but they're smart and they're, motivated and they kind of had the rug pulled out from under them when when their industry collapsed you know kind of overnight so so we're looking to help out those folks and and put them to work doing doing good things so i just dove right into it i hope that's okay yeah i know that that's great can you uh can you maybe give an example of a course and like the details and kind of how it works i know we can see the yeah. side range in the background now so maybe an example oh right yeah yeah. yeah so 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 um yeah, that's it. That's a that's a really good question. So the the structure of the boot camp itself is actually a simulated internship. So it's not really like a traditional online learning, you know, watching videos and taking courses. Um, though there there are video materials available to supplement the learning experience, but really the 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 design that we have is immersive and experiential, um, with an eye towards folks that maybe you know wouldn't normally go back to school to 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 do a career transition. Um, so the simulated internship has them working at a company, a fake company that we built uh, called Brickwall Cyber. Um, so we, we got a great team uh, putting that together and, and sort of polishing that up now um, with a deep sort of world built around it. So when you show up on day one at the boot camp, you're actually showing up as if you were day one on a new internship that where you're going to start off as an uh, a help desk technician, an intern working the help desk, doing simple troubleshooting tasks for your company uh, to make sure that you're comfortable with the fundamentals um, at the operating system user level, uh, you know, for Windows and Linux. And then once you've sort of demonstrated some expertise in, in, the, in the, the fundamentals of using these operating systems, then we'll progress the, the learner into uh, more advanced concepts. Um, still, still very much entry level, you know, um, inch deep, mile wide kind of concepts, but but uh, rotating through those in a relatively brisk manner through, you know, multi -modal, multi modal input. So what I mean by that is you don't have like a um, a blackboard system where you're going to go and sort of check out your, you know, here's the syllabus and I've got to do a paper and watch these videos and answer these discussion posts. Um, it's Th there, there is some of that, right? But, but really, what you're getting is uh, an email service, a calendaring system, uh, video conferencing, and you have a team to 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 work with. Um, so we're building the cohorts into teams, and problems to solve as if you were working on the job. So, so you've got to figure out how to make a registry edit in Windows, let's say, as part of your Windows fundamentals, um, you know, process. And it and it's a simple thing. You're flipping a flag for for something, but um, you know, for folks that don't know how to do that, it, it's, it's a daunting task. And so we have, you know, stepwise instructions and, and uh, sort of a team-based approach to help, help learn as a group and help answer each other's questions with um, TAs and faculty sort of role-playing different roles within the company itself. So, so your boss is going to be a faculty member. Your, you know, the senior members of your team are going to be TAs, uh, teaching assistants, senior students in our programs that are you know, been there, done that, answered a lot of these questions, um, are very advanced in the security field uh, compared to a lot of the entry-level folks, um, but they're there to help. So, you know, so they can help answer a lot of the questions that maybe, you know, m maybe you wouldn't want to bring to the boss, right? You want to try to solve it at the lowest level and kind of get used to working in that type of an environment um, without having to, you know, to, to 
operate without without the support at the same time. So, I, again, I can elaborate on a lot more of this, but um, you know, I maybe maybe be good if you if you have some sort of scoping questions of other things you might be interested. Yeah, in Yeah, I, I have a few things. So, um, certification wise, are there certain certs you guys are kind of working on? These guys getting is that included with the program? How how is that kind of be yep. rolled into it? Yeah, great question. So there's um, there's actually uh, three sets of certifications that this program will um, facilitate. The first we control at RIT. So uh, an RIT certified uh, skills scorecard associated with the most critical skills mapped to the NIST NICE uh, cybersecurity work roles. So there's a there's a formal federal effort that has all these things very well defined and. You know, there's skill numbers and, and knowledge area numbers and ability numbers and detailed descriptions of all those things and how they roll up into tasks that the role needs to perform in order to provide risk management for the for the enterprise. So so we've we've gone through the most critical of those for the entry level workforce, um, you know, to get that first job in the field. And and we have a, a skill proficiency level that we're expecting to build people to. Um, in things like security event triage, um, cloud security fundamentals, at least at an exposure level, um, some basic project management, just some of the things that you need to know to be effective in the field. And um, anyway, so that's all part of our skill scorecard, right? So an Art IT certified skill scorecard. Also, um, you know, that, that sort of academic brand gets you, gets you far, but it's not the only thing that matters in employability. So we're also aligning our curriculum to um, support the, the completion of a security plus and a cybersecurity first responder certificates, which are um, you know, federally or nationally accredited, uh, nationally recognized industry-based certifications um, that, will, uh, that will support you know, the claim that you actually know what you're talking about. And also um, you know, the program tuition for the bootcamp includes vouchers for those two exams, which you know, you, be pretty well prepared to take by the end of the uh, by the end of the boot camp. Wonderful, that's great. I love that you're appealing to people who um, need work, and we know that there's a huge need for those kinds of jobs. Can you maybe tell us a little bit about um, your acceptance rate for people who apply, as well as maybe scholarship options, since a lot of these people might not have like vast financial resources at this time. Yeah, yeah, that's really an important consideration for us because, we, I mean, again, the motivation behind this whole thing is not just another sort of educational program, but but really to help people get jobs. And you know, there's a real crisis with folks that need to need to keep a roof roof over their head and, and buy food for their families. You know, so so um, yeah, we've we've been very aggressive about pursuing those. In fact, we have um, some private donation, some private foundation uh, sponsorships uh, matching some applications that we've got out and are expecting back soon from the state of New York and also the federal government um, uh, to support scholarships uh, at a relatively robust level um, um, for probably a few hundred folks, you know, fully funded uh, once everything is settled, at least from the, the, the proposals that we've already put out. And we've, uh, we're finalizing partnership with some private lenders to provide um, sort of a, an augment an augment to the traditional, you know, personal lending options uh, dedicated to sort of deferred payments and reasonable payment options for folks that want to, you know, not pay all up front for the tuition. Um, that said, you know, these, the, across the country, the, the entry level roles that we're, that we're training folks to fill have an a annual average salary of around 90 grand. So these are good paying jobs, right? And, you know, to be fair, the first day on the job, brand new in the field, you're probably not going to command the industry average, right? You're probably going to be in order of magnitude below that, but that's okay because there's a lot of upward mobility. So if you get a job that pays reasonably well, 50 or 60 grand, and you're really hitting the hitting that market brand new to, to it, um, knowing that in a year or two, you're going to get a 10 or $20,000 raise, that's a pretty good way ahead through the financial crisis, you know? Um, and there's also, you know, tens of thousands of open positions. We've been tracking them and they haven't really gotten hit like almost everything else has. Um, there's still a persistent need from the employer perspective too. So 
So do you have some partnerships or ways to help people transition to full-time employment after they're done with yeah. this? Absolutely. Actually, we, uh, as part of this, um, you know, the proposals that we've built for scholarship funding, um, we, we've uh, just proposed to, um, to the federal government to create a coalition of seven universities and so far 36 companies that have committed to participating in career fairs and um, some have committed to interviewing specific numbers of candidates. Right now, we've got, we've got commitments to interview more than 150 of our graduates uh, for, for cybersecurity work roles. And um, we've got, you know, I think 16 folks that have uh, volunteered to serve in a sort of a technical advisory role for the coalition. Now, of course, we're, we're one university, right? And this is a big persistent problem. So our emphasis with that coalition is really to help others do the same thing and comp complement each other, right? There's a lot of there's a lot of bites to take out of the pie to solve the problem of both employing folks and getting the cybersecurity needs met. So, so we're really in a collaborative mode and it's cool to see that happen across academia like that. And, and uh, it seems that industry is very, very supportive. So um, ag again, this is still new. We haven't even launched the program yet. I don't have, you know, you asked me about acceptance rates. We, we don't even have our first cohort final date finalized yet. We're looking at early July. Um, we've almost got, enough applicants to fill it just out the gate, but we want to make sure that we're getting the folks that will be, you know, optimally suited to learn the most from this type of format and also be successful in a career placement. So it's a balancing act. Uh, good news is we're professional educators. We've done this for, you know, some of us for, for decades. Um, you know, I'm relatively new to academia, but, um, you know, I was a long time in ungovernment industry service. So, um, you know, different, different perspectives really contribute to a, a diverse perspective that that helps folks uh, get jobs and and work well so awesome and, and so are we are you having these programs every 15 weeks is it like three semesters out of the year or is it just one time a year how, how is that working uh, actually we're structuring the offerings uh, offset by three weeks so every three weeks we expect a new cohort to launch there's a deep deep need and a lot of folks that need jobs so um, you know, I don't really anticipate much difficulty in getting these folks placed uh, successfully on the back end, uh, nor to really find folks to, to fill the seats in the front end too. So it's really a matchmaking service with that, you know, the right type of training in the, in the middle. But yeah, every three weeks we'll launch a new cohort. Uh, we're expecting around 20 folks per cohort, maybe more, um, depending on demand and uh, supply, of course, but that's, um, that's our current planning factors right now. Okay, and just to give like an estimate for our people applying, assuming they had no extra funding, nothing supporting them, um, you said, you know, maybe 50, 60,000, 40,000. I mean, it's kind of hard to gauge what they're going to get starting, but I would say it's above what they would get normally without the experience. Um, mm -hmm. What is the total cost of the 15 week program, assuming you had no any support, anything like that? Yeah, yeah. So, total cost, uh, you know, sort of sticker price, if you want to call it that, is 10K. Uh, which is actually on the lower end, frankly, from a lot of the boot camps out there. Um, and we deliberately designed it that way, again, to maximize accessibility. We don't want, you know, financial hardship to be a, pre, uh, 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 to preclude anyone from participating in the program. We really want to make it accessible. So we're, we're committed to doing everything we can to get financing options, to defer payments, to give scholarships. Um, and even, you know, the RIT is even in a position where, you know, we might be able to help augment that too and and offer some sort of merit-based aid uh, internally but um, you know I can't really speak to a lot of that yet because we're still finalizing the the scholarship and aid process but um, it's looking very strong so I'm, I'm optimistic about that awesome that's great yeah I just like to emphasize that because a lot of people uh, go the four-year route to get a bachelor's and spend a lot of money and you know people kind of just want to get the skills get a job so having it you know $10,000 I think is a pretty good deal for the skills you're getting. And if you're able to get a job that is above like what you would normally get um, right off the bat, that's even better, honestly, even especially with the scholarship opportunities that are looking like they're going to be out there and different um, subsidizations uh, being subsidized a little bit for that as well. So I really appreciate that there. That's, that's great. Yeah. So, so just to expand on that a little bit, you know, a lot of the folks that we are finding um, impacted by this with, the, with job loss, maybe they already had, a degree, you know, or, or maybe they have an associate's degree or maybe, maybe even, you know, college wasn't really the right fit for them. 
but for for all you know for a lot of the folks that we're looking at that that have lost their job they're really not traditional students so a bachelor's degree or even a master's maybe isn't the right fit for them and um you know what is it 40 million or something that have been displaced out of that i've i've got to believe that there's a really strong sub segment that would be optimally suited to this type of career transition and do well in a, in a hands-on experiential learning environment that you know gets them gets them feeling like they're back to work immediately and really helps them prepare for their next job all right yeah, you really hit a lot of things that uh, I think that hit every point, really. I think uh, I think a lot of people are going to be really excited about this and the opportunity it provides. Um, and if you can provide the link to us for the application, I'd love to share that with everybody. Uh, I'm sure yeah. you're going to talk a lot of people, but I'm sure there's tons of people seeing this that would love to jump on this because it seems like a great opportunity, especially if they can uh, apply to some scholarships or anything. So that'd be great to just yeah, get absolutely. And, and as I mentioned, you know, we've, we've got applications supporting our first cohort, but every three weeks we, we're, we're going to be starting again with a new cohort. So it's, it's really about that matchmaking service with the right type of training in between to, to get folks back to work. Awesome. Thank you. We're so excited to help people to find great jobs and to do it in a really effective and efficient manner. So thank you for what you do and thank you for being here with us today. Yeah, thank you both for hosting and, and I really appreciate that you're uh, making the effort to help folks find meaningful jobs and uh, impact the, the technology workforce. It's a great thing that you're doing. So thanks again. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye.